some of you OGs of this group. The real, you know, the people that have been with me since Nam. You might remember, back in the old 122 days, before I went to General Sam 123, you might remember a series called Skyrim Interesting Places. This was my first big project. I made it after I had only made like a hundred videos, so I was still absolute dog shit at making videos, and that series turned out like poop. But it gave me my first couple thousand subscribers, and it was it was a learning experience. It was pretty good. But now, after I'm 700 videos in, I mean I'm balls deep in this motherfucker now. I know exactly what I'm doing. I mean I think I figured out everything on this computer. I discovered this thing called a start bar last week. It Fuck it, totally just revolutionized the whole process here. So I think I got this thing figured out now, and uh, and I decided now is the the premier time to jump on this thing and do a Fallout 4 interesting places. So let's uh let's get on in it. If I could, if I could just back up here for a second, uh, I like to go ahead and just go over what constitutes an interesting place before you uh, keyboard warrior cunts. You know, go ham, egg, and cheese in the comments section. It's just shit that you can find in the game, man. That's all this is here for. It's just stuff that you might not have found. I'm just trying to help you people out. You don't need to fucking tear me apart, man. My butthole's sensitive. Come on. Location 1. Blade Runner Easter Egg. First location is a sweet little easter egg nodding toward Ridley Scott's 1982 masterpiece Blade Runner. The story of the film revolves around a detective that specializes in hunting down replicants who share many similarities with the synths in this game. My mouth is like a fucking desert. It is so dry. <laughs> oh. This film climaxes with the protagonist and replicant antagonist having a big ol' heart-to-heart dick-to-butt session on a rooftop. This easter egg is an homage to that scene, which is fitting considering the film seemed to inspire the developers of Fallout 4. The game focuses on a lot of the themes the film touched on. And by the way, if you haven't seen Blade Runner, I'd go ahead and close out of this video, and shortly after killing yourself, I'd consider downloading that movie giving it the old watcher Rue. It's an outstanding visual masterpiece, even if Harrison Ford is in it. Sci-fi, noir, detective shit, it's, it's a blasty blast, I'm, I promise you. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears in rain. Location 2, Fender Bender. This is a nice little scene here, alright? Some cars were thrown into the treetops by nuclear blasts along with some bodies beneath them with their little leggies sticking out of the ground. At first I thought the legs belonged to the passengers of the cars, but on second thought, if the bodies were pre-war then there'd be skeletons by now. So there'd had to be some wastelanders that, you know, wanted to camp under these fucking cars. The reason why their torsos are under the ground? Eh. I guess the Rad Scorpions dragged them under there? I don't know. I, this one ain't exactly the hottest shit on the list, but given its location at the tippity top of the map, far out of the way of the normal cruising and perusing player to see, I thought I'd throw it in here. Location 3, UFO Crash. Technically a random encounter, once it happens the crash will persist through your playthrough. Personally, the crash site was a pain in the ass to find, but once you figure out where this warlock is, there's a cool little green guy and a fancy gun to be found. NRA style. Location 4. The FMS Northern Star. The FMS Northern Star, at first, appears to just be a big old stupid ship full of raider ghouls that speak gibberish as they beat your ass. After I cleared them out, I looked up the location and found out the ghouls are actually pre-war and they're simply defending their ship. All that gibberish they yell at you? They're just telling you to fuck off and leave them alone. <laughs> they're not act they don't see they're not mean. Anyways, parallels have been drawn to the Norwegian researchers from the uh, John Carpenter's The Thing movie, in which the Norwegians are trying to warn the American researchers of danger and they're killed because of the language barrier. They they thought they were hostile. And if I could go on a second movie rant here, John Carpenter's The Thing is like the single best horror movie of all time. The practical effects in that movie are absolutely just fucking bomb diggity, man. Carpenter's attention to detail, like uh, like continuity and stuff, it's incredible. It's a great film, 
for like you northern people that get snowed in like watch it when you're snowed in man it will be it's, just, it's the shit you will go for that where the fuck are you from rags <laughs> enlighten me Am I out of ammo? Hold on. Location 5. The Cask of Amontillado. The Cask of Amontillado is, besides the fall of the House of Usher, my favorite Poe story. So I was genuinely excited to see a nice little nod to it while reclaiming that stupid armory in the bowels of the castle. The protagonist in the story leads some guy he hates down into a cellar with the offer of tasting some tasty amontillado, which is a wine. Once in the cellar, the antagonist gets shackled or some shit, I don't really remember, but the protagonist ends up spending the rest of the night walling him into the, like this alcove, brick by brick, you know, to wall him up so he, he dies in there by himself. Now, General McGann, the guy that's in the game, that's supposed to be the protagonist of the cask amontillado, he's sitting next to the amontillado, he's just chilling there, and Shaw gives you this conjecture-filled story about how he held off enemies from the armory and blah blah blah. How the fuck does she know that? Alright, I'm using my fucking eyeballs here, and what I see is some dude chained up to a wall, a General McGann walling up this asshole while sipping on some grape juice. Alright, martyr my ass, he was killing someone if you ask me. Location 6. Shim Drown's Grave. This is not only an interesting location, but it's also a pretty sweet little, has a little sweet little side quest tied to it. If you're feeling a little bit fancy, you can go snooping around Nick Valentine's office and find a file on Marty Bullfind, which is a very upper, next-gen, middle-tier quest called the Gilded Grasshopper. This quest ends with you at the gravesite of Shim Drown. Shim Drown is a famous cop... <laughs> Let's use that word uh, loosely here. He's a famous coppersmith that was created that created the uh, the Grasshopper weather vane on top of the uh, Fan Wheel Hall in Boston. I know, it doesn't sound very cool or anything, but apparently it's some big shit back in the day. A, f a fucking copper weather vane. Anyways, when digging up the grave, you can find Shim Drown's sword. A unique sword, I might add. And uh, he has some other crap in there, too. It's nice to see Bethesda integrate some of Boston's history into the game. Even if it is a stupid weather vane. <laughs> Location 7, The Plumber's Secret. Inside this inconspicuous plumber's store lies one of the greatest discoveries of all time. After dispatching a couple roaches, you'll find a plumber that has found a second, far more badass use for the classic plunger. Not only can you use them to dislodge your wife's disproportionately large shits, like how the fuck does someone make shits that have to weigh at least 10% of their body weight? I don't get it, alright? Anyways, you can use them to climb on the ceiling. This is a great day, my friends. Don't test it out small time, alright? Buy a couple extra plungers, and go to your nearest skyscraper and try to scale down it. That's right, don't don't piddle fuck around. Start from the top down. It's less tiring on your arms. This dude stashed a syringe and some caps. It's not real hot shit, but uh, there was also a similar case in Fallout 3 with a bunch of blood and plungers going up a wall and ceiling. I don't remember where that was, but I remember seeing it. Short, short story is Bethesda likes plungers. Location 8. Le legs of free f free fall legs free f free fall legs these little bad boys not only make your thighs look bulky and cover up the fact that you've been skipping leg day since 1991 but they also keep you from taking fall damage first you need to go to the mass fusion high rise it's that big red dick you've been uh you know you never really gotten around to checking out <laughs> it's pretty much the biggest building in fallout so these bad boys are difficult to get to you need either power armor with a jetpack that bucket glitch thing, or some dank 420 console commands. I'll be ripping some mad bong hits on the console because I hate power armor and buckets are for fags. Secondly, you need the quest that goes along with this or else you, the legs won't spawn. It's an ain't gonna happen. The quest is given to you by some bitch in the institute, but you, you can look it up. Since I don't fuck with those cheeky little cunt lords, I decided to find my own way. What, what I did was I no clip my way to the penthouse on the outside of the building which automatically starts the quest. Then went back downstairs into the lobby and no clip my way up the interior of the tower to where the intern is sitting in his office at the top floor and he's just trilling there in a chair next to the safe. The legs are in the safe. Why are they there? Well, the intern was developing them and 
He's going to use them for some stupid party thing to demonstrate their usefulness. I don't know. Anyways, both legs need to be worn in order to work. And don't forget the fusion coil that's on the floor below him. Location 9. Art versus art. You can explain the synth problem all day without truly realizing the fear people have in this world until you see this random encounter. What will happen is you'll come across two men named Art. One is holding another at gunpoint and claiming the man he's about to kill is a synth and that he's there to replace him in the world. You can choose to help either. It don't matter to me. I just went in, guns a-blazing, to figure out who was telling the truth. But consider all those people you've met in Fallout 4. How many of them are synths? It's weird to think about. It's like the invasion of the body snatcher meets uh, Blade Runner. Oh, and since this is a random encounter, it technically isn't a location. But it's cool, so I'm putting it in here. Christ, that thing was wearing my face. Location 10, The Death Maze. Well, that's what people have been calling it. It's a pretty shitty name, if you ask me. But regardless, it's pretty cool. Situated within an old parking garage, someone has rigged up a beautifully lethal maze to help you appreciate your life a little more. Full of titty traps as well as ghouls, I'd highly recommend you getting the sneak perk, which allows you to waltz over the traps like a mad cunt without tripping them. After making it through the maze, you'll be given the choice of two prizes. Choose wisely, because whichever you don't pick will be destroyed. I tried to choose both and lost it all because I'm a greedy fuck and my dad's Jewish. And that shit's in my blood, man. I can't help it. Someone kill me. Thank you for watching this episode of Fallout 4 Interesting Places. This might be a series depending on how well it goes over. Remember, if you want some more of my retarded voice in your life, come check out the Fallout 4 Hugh Janus LP that's just getting good. We're like 30 episodes in and it's still grueling to watch. Also, you could subscribe if you were feeling real fucking nerdy. And as always, have a nice day.